one of Romania's most mesmerizing voice. A tragic destiny that shocked the entire country. This is the story of the most loved artist that colored the gray atmosphere of communist Romania. This is Mihela Runcianu. Mihela Runcianu. A star among the stars. Mihaela Runcianu was born in the city of Buzo in 1955, but soon after, her parents moved to Bacau, where she started school. She was the only daughter of Nikolai and Lenuta Runcianu, the apple of their eyes. The little girl showed intense interest in music from an early age. Mihaela attended the Music and Plastic Arts High School there. Upon finishing high school in 1974, she went to Bucharest to attend the Cyprian Porumbescu Music Conservatory, from which she graduated in 1978. Michaela began recording music tapes and discs at the only recording house in Romania, Electricord, in the early 80s. Her voice was a huge success and the messages of her songs were healing thousands of hearts. Throughout her short career, Mihaila brought tears of joy in the eyes of the public that she sang to. Delphi să vii, eu nu te-am uitat, or fericirea are chipul tău, are a part of her most recognizable songs. She loved being around people, and people loved being around her. She had an energy and a way of making everyone fall in love with her voice and appearance. Despite all this, she never married or had children. She put her career above any other plans. It is November the 1st, year 1989. Another day in the capital of Romania, Bucharest. The last month of Mihaela Runcianu's life was a very busy month for her. Hours at the popular art school, radio and electro record recordings, TV filming, performances in Bucharest, tours in the country, etc. On 30th of October, Mihaela had what it would be her last performance. In the audience's applauses, she kneeled for the last time. She used to meet with friends frequently. This was also the case. Stefanescu met Mihaela Runcianu through a mutual friend. 
He was the one who brought her videotapes, borrowed from his parents. What attracted him to the artist was the fact that she had valuable objects in the house, VCR and color TV. It was not the first time when Mihaila invited Stefanescu in her apartment. It was almost like a tradition for them to watch videotapes, especially when it contained movies that were usually prohibited by the communist government. But that night, there was something that broke the course of the events. At the door was Mariana Sambatianu, Mihaela's tenant. The two young women argued because of the frequent. Calls received on the artist's phone, and Mihaela asked her tenant to leave the apartment. Nothing could predict what was about to happen next. The artist left the hallway and went to the bathroom to take a shower, while Stefanescu remained in the living room watching the tape. Soon after, Mihaela came back to notify him that she is going to bed and that he can stay and keep watching the tape. This is the moment when Ranciano unawarely signs her own death warrant. After she falls asleep, Daniel began to carry out things out of Mihaela's apartment. Woken up by the noises, Mihaela realizes what was happening. But before she could do anything to stop him, Stefanescu attacked her. Struggling to save her own life, Mihaela manages to scratch Stefanescu on the cheeks and abdomen with her nails. He kept strangling her with shocking force and resistance. And then there was only silence. Mihaela Ronchanu was no more. He then continued stealing, while Mihaela was lying dead on the bed. Or so he thought. When he realized that the poor woman was still moving, he decided to get rid of her for good. He pulled out the telephonic cable and wrapped it around his victim's neck. He strangled her one more time, making sure this time that she would never wake up ever again. Searching throughout the house, he found on the balcony a can of petrol. This is when things truly got out of hand. In his anger and desire to dispose of the corpse, he poured petrol all over the place. Then before leaving with all he stole, he set the apartment on fire, leaving Mihaela inside burning to ashes, in a hope that this way he would erase all of his traces. Little did he know he would not get away with it. Mihaela's tenant Mariana came back few hours later at about 3 a.m. in the morning, but found the door locked and felt a smell similar to burned pork meat. She had no option but to break the door and what she found inside horrified her to her bones. The apartment was looking like a cave. The home was a complete disaster, and Mihaela was nowhere to be found. In shock, she went to the living room, hoping she'd find her safe and sound. But it was too late. Mihaela's partially burnt body was lying on the floor with her face turned down. The same shock hit all those who loved and respected her. No one ever thought that someone like her would end up that way. Urgently, the police was mobilized in order to seize Mihaela's murderer. And they did. Only 36 hours after the crime happened, Stefanescu was caught. He admitted the crime he committed and was sentenced to imprisonment for life. But that would never bring Mihaela Runcianu back to life.
The golden voice that perished so dramatically was accompanied on her last walk by millions of people across the country. Without any doubt, the ones who suffered the most were Lenutza and Nikolai, who had lost their only daughter. And in a way that no one deserves to leave this world. After Mihaela's murder, lots of questions remained without any answer. Such as, what would have happened if she never opened the door for Stefanescu? Maybe she would have still fascinate us with her unique voice and tell us a lot more about true love. In her incredibly short life, Mihaela Rancianu managed to print her name in Romanian music history and even in worldwide music history. Many of today's singers and performers had been prepared and taught the wonders of music by her. Few of her students were Silvia Dumitrescu, Adrian Enace, Marina Florea, Madalina Manole, Miki, Nicola or Carmen Trandafir. Her legacy continues to live on through them and will live as long as she is remembered for the outstanding artist that she was. Such talent and dedication are rare nowadays. In a world full of low-quality music education, it is a blessing to find someone at least as dedicated and passionate as Mihaila Runcianu was. Time passed, we're in 2024, exactly 35 years since Mihaela disappeared from public eyes. Many things changed since then. Fashion, music tastes, the communism was eradicated. After all, we do experience the speed century. But there still are people which stay the same. People who never managed to get over what happened on November the 1st, 1989. Few of us know that thou Mihaela didn't have children. She had two exquisite nephews, Andrea and Zenti Runcianu. Both of them inherited the love for music from their late aunt. Just as in Mihaela's case between Andrea and the violin, it was love at first touch. Andrea Runcianu performs all over the world with her band Amadeus. And Zenti is a successful pianist, having dot concerts on the biggest stages of the world 